each year it seems like getting accepted into med school in North America at least just becomes harder and harder. The longer you're here, the worse you're getting. You have to write so many tests, the MCAT for one, so many science prerequisites. Seems like you almost have to cure cancer to get into med school. Thousands of people apply each year for a few limited spots. And unless you're one of those lucky few, you may wonder what exactly you need to get into med school. So it took me three times to finally get in. I'm a first year med student at UBC. I just finished uh, my first semester and I also applied to the MD PhD stream, which is the stream that I'm actually doing. So I applied three times. The first time I applied, I applied in third year undergrad. I was doing my psych degree, which is also a less traditional route. Uh, and I didn't get any interviews. The second time I applied was after I graduated my uh, bachelor's degree. And I just got one interview to Queens, but didn't get accepted. And finally, I did a master's degree, a two years master's in neuroscience. And I got an interview at four places, uh, University of Toronto, Queens, UBC, and Harvard. Uh, out of all places, I decided to apply to a few schools. Uh, and I got accepted into UBC. So I wanna take you a little bit on my journey, what I thought made me successful and how I improved my application the three times that I did it uh, so that I could hopefully help you. And of course, this is gonna look more from a Canadian perspective, but I'll also go over my application uh, for the schools that I applied to in the States. And again, I was successful in getting an interview, but not getting into Harvard Med. So if you have any comments as well, please be sure to leave them down below. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. I think it's best if I started out with my AMCAS report. So this is my application to the schools in the States. Um, just because I, I think it has all the same information as my applications to the Ontario schools, as well as to UBC, but it's just nicely laid out here. Um, I think compared to the UBC application and the Ontario application. I just blocked out some identifying information, but uh, again, I was born in Sobarance, Slovakia, immigrated to Canada when I was quite young. Some people say that it matters when you submit your application, but this is mainly for schools in the States, I think. Uh, but I submitted it August 2nd, 2021, and it was processed August 26th. Going through my grades, I would say I did decently well. I think my OMSAS overall GPA was a 3.96. Uh, and we'll scroll down to see what my GPA is in terms of the MCAS, but I think it's it's around the same. Um, the way that they convert their grades is a little bit different compared to Canadian schools, but this was the grade that I reported, and this was the MCAS grade. The A pluses are turned into A's for whatever reason. And uh, I did my degree in psychology uh, at Queen's in Kingston, and I started in 2016, I graduated it in 2020, so freshman year here. Uh, of course, I took biology, chem, mathematics, physics, uh, and this was uh, psych. As the years progressed, I took more, um, took more psych-related courses for my degree. I took some biochemistry, uh, again, mainly for the MCAT, and we'll see that I also took the MCAT three times. I took econ just because I'm interested in finance. I mean, the whole YouTube channel that I made is uh, is based off of stocks. So just wanted to take econ. So you can see I took stats, um, brain and behavior, another biochem course, second econ course. And again, did pretty well for all of them. Every story is different. I know a lot of people that I would say that I personally did uh, focus a lot more on my academics and less on my extracurriculars whereas others focus a lot more on their extracurriculars uh, and have, have done a lot more research in uh, their undergrad versus compared to me. Maybe they were also part of the sport. They did a lot of overseas trips. I think overall where my application lacked was more into the health uh, healthcare related field. In Canada, it's a lot harder to shadow doctors when you're in undergrad. I know that uh, if you're applying to the States, you can shadow a lot easier. As an undergrad student, there are even some laws, I think, in Canada surrounding being able to shadow. Um, so I tried to work around that, but I also, I will admit, I didn't have a lot of volunteer experience in a hospital, for example, uh, but I know that you don't necessarily need to do that to gain admission into med. Um, so again, just going down here, yeah, some econ courses, some more psych. I took farm, um, social psych. I took a NAT, again, a NAT 100, microbiology. 
here I did again more psych courses. This was a direct and special lab. I also did uh, a thesis as well. I took English. This was a prerequisite for UBC. You need one English course, uh, physiology, behavioral neuroeconomics, super cool course, psych 501, which was the honors. Uh, organic chemistry I took in the summer because that was a prerequisite for a lot of schools in the States. And this was Dalhousie University again. This was my master's. A lot of, I only had to take four courses. Uh, and again, it was mainly just the thesis. These are the science grade point averages. Um, cumulative undergrad, 3.95. And cumulative graduate, I guess four. Uh, it doesn't count as the science one. Uh, and all others, I had a 4.0 GPA uh, also for my graduate 4.0 GPA. So again, very happy with that. Total, my uh, cumulative undergrad was a 3.99 GPA and cumulative grad was a 4.0 GPA. So I also took the MCAT three times. These are all my scores. So first test date, I did it after first year. I find myself super funny. <laughs> I find myself super funny. Which, I mean, I think it was kind of maybe a little bit of a bold move. I think I was a bit overconfident. Uh, I scored decently well, 511. So 81st percentile. I think the thing that was really bringing me down and some schools just looked at the car section. Uh, I got a 125 in the cars, which was 60th percentile. All the other ones, I guess I didn't do terrible. 128 on uh, chemical, like uh, chem and phys. Um, bio, I scored 127. And of course, psych, I mean, 97th percentile. Given that I'm majoring in psych, that kind of makes sense. Second time I took it the next year, so 2018, that was my best score ever, 516. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here. 516, so 92nd percentile, 128 for chem chemistry and physics, um, 125 as well in cars, so similar to the other score, I got 125, which was quite disappointing. Um, and 131 in bio, so 98th percentile and 100th percentile in uh, psych and soch. I did much better in 2018 than in uh, 2017, although this car score was still what was bringing me down. So I don't know if it was good or a bad decision, but I just decided to do it all over again in 2019. And this time I, I did worse than my second time, but better than my first time. I got a 513, which is 86th percentile. Same score on chem and phys. Uh, 127 on cars, so uh, big improvement for me. And bio, I got 128 and uh, psych and soch 130. I, with the MCAT, I think it was hit or miss. I remember those summers I was working a full-time job. I had to kind of cram in studying along with athletics as well. Uh, and also just trying to have a good time. I mean, I think that definitely burned me out, but I'm happy that I did it the way that I did it. I don't know if it was necessary to take the MCAT the final time, but I did it. It is what it is. These are my experiences for the MCAS application. I think it's easiest just to list your awards, list the dollar value that you got, uh, as well as the years that you had them. Um, and of course, if there's multiple awards that have different verifiers, also include that. Um, this was my main community service volunteer activity where I went into the, the loaded ladle. And I've heard that there are many different ways of describing the experience. I just decided to describe it um, as if it were a story. They have thousands of people reading these applications. And if you make it a little bit interesting, rather than just like listing what you did, but say that, for example, the kitchen was chaotic, potatoes were boiling, banana bread was baking, and apples were being tossed into the salad. That kind of makes it seem more interesting and more intriguing. I had a lot of research, uh, so I had quite a few publications. I think I also updated my application to show that I had uh, more publications than this. Two first author and one uh, second author. I did a little bit of shadowing. Again, it's a little bit harder. I think the only reason why I was able to was at least at Dalhousie, uh, I was a grad student. So that afforded me more opportunities to, to shadow in the OR there. And I put my YouTube channel on this. I spent a lot of time on YouTube. It was a pandemic project. I figured it'd be good to get comfortable in front of a camera. I was interested in finance. I managed to become uh, decently successful just over a year. I gained about 2000 subscribers. Yeah, whatever, no big deal.
Uh, I was a varsity rower throughout undergrad. I also did some other sports, but I put varsity rowing because that was where I had the most success, uh, made it to nationals. And that was also one of my most meaningful experiences, which you can stay on your MCAS application. I think you can stay up to three. In my later years during my undergrad, I was a TA for Psych 100. It was also part of like a built-in course. Uh, and you were able to get paid. Always good to show that uh, you're you're able to help students. And if you have an experience saying something like, oh, this student uh, was struggling, uh, they got a B or a C on their midterm, and then next thing you know, you help them out and they had an A on their final. I mean, that's always good, rather than saying, I tutored this course for this many hours. I was also residenced on, uh, and it's a really good way to not only get a leadership experience, it's like a, a residence advisor. I think there are many different names for it. Great way to save money, uh, do a le leadership experience. And now I'm a senior RA. So this was also a meaningful experience because just because I put so much time into it. In general, I like experiences that serve multiple purposes. So the RA one, it not only allowed me to have a leadership uh, role, it, it saved me some, some money, of course. Uh, I just listed some awards um, for my varsity athletics. I did triathlon and rowing here. Uh, did some conference presentations for my undergrad. And of course, put my lab experience. As you can see, 4,600 hours of research experience. I spent all my summers pretty much working in a lab. I volunteered at a first aid tent when I was doing triathlon. I was also a peer health educator. There are many different types of positions that you can roll in. I was just interested in it. I ran a run club. Uh, and I also think it's nice to see that first I was just on the uh, peer health educator team. I was a run club member, but then the following year I was in a leadership position. I was actually running. I was the, the president of the run club. I was also the bike coach for the university triathlon for a bit. Also the run coach. Uh, for a year and um, uh, I also played chess. So I think it'd be quite long if I went through my whole MD PhD research essay as well as uh, my significant research experience and personal statement. In general, the tips that I have for that is be tr true to you, develop a story. Don't just list points on why you want to get into medicine but really develop a story from what formative experiences you've had that led you into medicine. So these are all the programs that I applied to. And I think I only finished the supplemental, um, supplemental applications for maybe like six of them. And Harvard was the only one that interviewed me. I use the same application for the Ontario schools as well as for UBC. So that's it for my application. The information that was in this application was exactly the same information for my UBC application. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. So I'll make some future videos, but this is just my application cycle from last year that got me accepted into um, school the third time around. But yeah, feel free to subscribe if you'd like more content like this. And uh, yeah, Suno Stocks out. Peace.